the QIT 780 plus monoband mobile radio for two meter FM only at 100 watts. We're going to take a look at that coming up. Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the channel. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB. I've been a licensed ham radio operator in Texas since 1994, and I've been doing YouTube videos since about 2015. And on this channel, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of many things inside of amateur radio. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, this is not a new radio. A lot of times I like to do reviews on new stuff, stuff when it comes out, when it's fairly new, you know, it just kind of came out a couple months ago, that kind of thing. This radio has actually been out a while. In fact, I looked it up, and there's a couple of re reviews from uh, 2018 on eham.net, and they get pretty favorable reviews. The, the pros and the cons seem to be kind of even. I think there's only two or three reviews at the time of this recording. The cons are about the software, the fact that it doesn't come with a programming cable, and it seems to be difficult to program from the face. We're going to take a look at that here in a second. But this is a 2-meter only, 100-watt FM radio for amateur radio. Now, at the time of this recording also, I should preface this. We're just going to use a dummy load today. This has no FCC type acceptance, no FCC certification number. It's not on the box. It's not on the radio. I did a quick search through the database. I couldn't really find anything that matched this specific model number. So at the time of this recording, I'm pretty sure it does not have FCC certification. So you guys write in reviews on eHAM. You're not putting it on YouTube. I guess it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, man, I don't care. Whatever you want to do is all good with me. So let's take a look at the top of it. I will say this up front. It's awfully small. This is a Raspberry Pi case that I'll just sit on top of it for a, for a frame of reference. It's awfully small for a 100-watt radio. Okay, it's got a pretty decent sink, uh, heat sink here, pretty uh, wide, deep this direction. Um, but that's all it is. It does have a, a fan in the middle of the heat sink. You can see that silver part in the middle there is a... It looks silver. It's actually a white sticker on top of the fan. That's a heat sink there. This is your sticker. I will say also that it does have CE certification. So you folks over there, the European Union, you guys are covered. Okay, FCC, no FCC at the time of this recording, but it does have CE certification. So there's that. This is the back of the radio. This is the um, external speaker port, standard SO239 connector. The bottom is got the heat sink uh, material on it, like the case says. One other reviewer on Eham said that the holes drilled in the case didn't line up correctly with the mounting bracket it came with. I'm not gonna even I'm not gonna even try that today. And that so that's the top of the radio, it's internal speaker right there, of course. And this is what the front of the radio looks like. So what I want to do today is hook this up and take a look at it and see what kind of power output we're getting because I've got my radio cam over here right there. So I'm going to hook it up to this radio cam real quick. We're going to put it on the MFJ meter, and we're going to test and see if it does, in fact, do 100 watts. Right before we get to that, let me also show you guys the box. This is Sometimes I get t told... Some, some viewers like the unboxing, and some don't. This, so this is just going to show you what the box looks like. It's a pretty decent sized box here 100 watts five tone two tone a and i dtmf it does come with a dtmf microphone this is a, the manual another uh guy on eham or one of the guys on eham said that the manual was crap you know i never even read the manuals on these chinese radios they're they seem to be kind of usually it's just easier just to start pushing buttons and figure it out this is the bracket that they say didn't fit well standard t connector on the power cable there some screws, mic clip, and here is the microphone. Right there. That's what the microphone looks like. Very reminiscent of a Kenwood microphone. Some of the other Chinese brands, maybe a Connect Systems microphone, looks similar to that. Menu, up, down, exit, A, B, scan, and lock. That's the uh, buttons on the microphone. So let's go ahead and plug it up and see what she looks like. Here's what it looks like. This uh, this this is a volume knob here on the right. This is a channel selector knob that got um, stops in it. So to 
power the radio on, hold down the volume knob. Now, I find it very odd that a mobile radio without an internal battery has a battery indicator, as seen right there. Right above the VFO, it's got a battery indicator. So I thought, well, maybe it's got a battery for it. And maybe they make an external battery for it, but it's nothing that comes with it. So my, my thinking is that probably this screen and um, software that runs the radio is probably used in multiple models. So they've got the battery icon there for a radio that doesn't have a battery. I guess maybe it'll tell you if your car batteries or power supply is low. I don't know. So <laughs> right under it, there's an RG45 plug for the microphone we just looked at. There's that. Now you can see uh, in the green text there beneath it, so that's, that's, this is your VFO, obviously, the 155.497. That's just kind of what it came up. Actually, I think it came up. To, I was fiddling with it earlier. I think it came up to 155.5. There's a signal there. M is presumably medium. W is presumably wide. So there's um, VM for VFO and memory. Call. You can set a call channel. Turns purple. High and low. Okay, so that's that beep is awfully loud. Let's turn this down all the way. It's kind of a tight knob there. Okay, that did turn the... Okay, so the beep volume follows the volume knob. A lot of times in some of these uh, lesser expensive radios, the beep volume cannot be adjusted by the volume knob. So this one can. So that's a good, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Okay. Okay, we're going to turn that down a little bit. So H and HL is high-low. It's actually got tri-power. So H right there, M for medium, L for low. And then if you hold this power, this button down, it locks the screen. And you'll see a little lock button come up, or icon come up right there next to the battery that doesn't exist. Same thing, hold it down. Long press again does that. Uh, the four bands underneath, the four bands in green underneath the VFO on the screen, apparently, according to what I've read about the radio, will allow you to monitor four VHF, FM again, bands at the same time. So that's a cool feature. If you're listening to uh, multiple repeat, if you want to keep uh, 146.52 on constantly, you want to listen to two or three different repeaters all at the same time. That's kind of a neat feature, I guess. Um, kind of weird to see that feature on a mono band radio but you know that's that's what we've got so this is monitor opens the squelch obviously fm turns on the fm radio you see down there at the bottom right there it says dc 14.8.10 volts right now and it changed to fm 888.9 and back again and this is the exit button and the abcd okay so Short pressing that changes which mon which band or which frequency I should say you are monitoring or maybe keying up on because it's going to key up on whichever one. There's that little arrow in the middle of the green frequencies there that moves when I short press this button, and then the VFO and the white text at the top changes. So you can monitor. It says it monitors all four at the same time. Um, I don't think I'm going to get a chance to test that because we are going into a dummy load. What I want to know is how to get into the menu. There it is. Okay, so short pressing this uh, this channel selector knob goes into the menu, starts with men menu zero, goes to 59, reset all. So it's got 2.5 step. That's as low as it goes. Does not do the 833 step for the airband, but it doesn't monitor airband neither, so that's okay. Squelch, transmit power is high. Wide and narrow. It'll do narrow FM, as seen there. ABR. Yeah, okay, so you can turn the beep off. There you go. There you go. Beep is off. So a lot of the times I get asked the question about the beep, and other times I'm asked the question about um, uh, blind hams uh, will will comment on my video saying, does this, does this radio talk to you? Uh, do, we'd like to know if, the, if there's audible voice that talks to you when you go through the menu and the answer on this one is no it does not i just thought i'd point that out while we were there in the menu but it there's does not seem to be any voice on it i didn't it's not something i turned off it just wasn't there i guess you could go through the 59 menus and look for it we'll look for it here in a second but as of right now i don't see it on there so we're going to switch back over here to the other cam 
and okay so the menu exited right there you see the beep is gone now ptt id is off ptt light okay channel name okay so you can do that channel name MVF frequency. Well, it's got a lot of different stuff in there. Okay, memory channel. Here we go. This is what I want to look at here. Memory channel. That's cha that's menu number 46. Okay. Delete channel. Uh, repeater offset. Offset. Ooh, holy cow. Offset frequency. That's weird. Uh, let's use the microphone here. Okay, there we go. Yep. A and I, A and I L. These are all other tones type stuff on repeaters. So, okay, so I'm going to make sure the offset's turned off. Yeah, it is. It's off down there at the bottom. We're going to click on that button there for exit. Okay, so let's go into memory channel. There's a zero, a one, a two, a three and a 255. Okay, so let's do it this way. Because some, uh, some, some radios don't have overwrite. So let's go in here and let's go to delete channel. Two. Okay, it rebooted the radio when I deleted that channel. Let's go see if it's still deleted. So memory channel one is still showing right there, which is right here, channel 001. And it skips and goes to 003. So that did work. That the, It worked for deleting the channel. I'm going to go in here and delete the channel 3 now. Okay, you see how that's blank? And there's a CH show up? The CH shows up when there's an actual memory channel already written. And it's blank when not. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that channel. Wait for the radio to reboot. That's kind of strange that the radio reboots when you delete a channel, but such such is life. So there's channel zero, channel 255, channel zero, one, and 255. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into the menu, and uh, let's go into VFO mode. There it is. 146.52. Okay. No offset. No uh, no Curtis, uh, CTCSS tone, rather. Go there. I'm going to go to memory channel, and I'm going to program it in channel 2. Okay, did not reboot, but now we see a CH in front of channel 2. Exit. We're still in VFO mode, memory mode, 1, 2. There it is right there. So that's how you would program the channel. I suspect that, I, I believe that uh, review I saw was from about 2018, on eham.net, and uh, you know, I suspect that they've they've probably made several updates to it. I've had this. I've actually had this radio in my possession since right before COVID. Like it was like February of 2020, something like that. And it's kind of like you know, when COVID started, uh, my whole schedule got rearranged. And quite frankly, I'm I had forgotten I had this radio. And we're doing two meter night. I hope everyone in, is enjoying. Uh, Monday Night Ham Radio from the YouTubers for two meter night. That's why I was like, oh, I've got this 100 watt two meter radio that I want to do. So if you like this content, be sure and give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. And um, click on subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And join the Monday Night content. Be sure and click on the playlist for Monday Night Ham Radio. And the playlist goes in order. If you click on the first, vi if you open up the playlist and click on the first video, they'll just go in order as each premiere happens. So uh, thank you for being here. Let's get back to it. We're going to do some power testing now. Okay, so we're on 146.52, and I'm on high power, which you can see right there. Okay, and you can see the screen down there. I'm going to go ahead and turn that to the, I probably moved that earlier when I keyed it up, but I wasn't paying attention to it. Okay, so we're on high power. You can see the H at the top of the screen there, wideband. And uh, we're on 146.52, which is probably the most used, well, at least in the USA, it's the most used um, frequency for two meter. We're going to switch over to the 200 watt scale, which is this knob right here. Can't see that it's underneath the, uh... there we go, 200 watt scale right there. 
520 and 200 are the scales on this MFJ meter. Special thanks to MFJ for allowing me to use this meter, the uh, MFJ873 analog meter. I've had some really good uh, good luck with this meter. It's been helpful and used it in a lot of videos. So let's key this up. Oh, yeah. That's about, that's about 90 watts right there. It's pushing about 90 watts. KC5 HWB testing, but we're going into a dummy load, so probably not hearing it outside of my backyard. Oh, you can see, see down, down at the bottom of the screen, the mic, mic gain. You can see the mic gain down there at the bottom of the screen, so I really wonder how this radio sounds. Kind of neat. Okay, so now I'm going to change it to medium power. And we're going to go, oh, it's about 70 watts on medium power right there. I can hear the, van, the fan in the back of the radio spinning, as well I should. Fan just kicked into a higher gear. Radio is not hot at, the, at this time. But I'm going to switch it to low power. On low power, it does about, about 25 watts on low power. Audio one two three four five KC five HWB. There you go. So about ninety watts into a dummy load on an MFJ meter. Right there. One two three four five. So there is that. That is a good test of the mono band. And. Uh, you know, for most of these radios that advertise a certain wattage, they'll do up to that somewhere. You know, I might be able to go up to a 147.5 and do uh, 100 watts or closer to 100 watts. Let's try it and see. VFO 147.500. It is. That's exactly what it does. So it's it's it's... Closer to 100 watts if you're at 147.500. Right there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, KC5, HWB. It's about 95 watts according to this meter right here. So you get about 90 watts at the National Calling uh, Simplex Frequency for in the USA for 2-meter FM, and about um, 5 watts or so more than that as you go up in the band. Um, our... Two meter band in the USA is only 144 to 140, 48, basically 147.999, I think. Um, so, so we have only like a little four um, megabyte segment in there on the two meter band. So it's not very wide, but it is one of the most popular bands in the United States, especially for repeaters. So 146.52, you're going to get some activity on. Um, most of the time, if you're driving down the road on a road trip, some that's the best chance you have of hearing someone on FM Simplex. So there it is. So let me know what you think, guys. Um, if you have this radio, if you've seen it, uh, they have it on Amazon. I'll go find the Amazon link, which is where I got it. I'll go find the Amazon link. It'll be in the YouTube description below. Again, at the time of this recording, it doesn't have FCC type acceptance. So I'm not going to tell you to not buy it, but I'm not also not going to tell you that it's okay to buy it. Uh, just use your own judgment and make your own decision. I'm not going to tell you what to do one way or the other. Let me, uh, let me know below in the comments who has this radio. Question of the day. If you are going to pick a high-powered VHF-only FM radio, which one would it be? I did a review a while, a while back on the Elenco. I think it's a uh, HTB-185. It was an 85 watt FM only radio, uh, monoband mobile radio from Alenco. They've got um, Kenwood makes a, their TM281 is about 65 watts, and there's a few others out there. So, what's your favorite monoband, high powered, two meter only FM radio, and what do you use it for? Put a comment below, and we'll catch you next time.